Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to Higher Chemistry. Uh, this is going to be a super short video, I hope, on the alcohol family. The homologous series called the alcohols. Uh, you're required to know uh, the, how to name them properly, you're required to know their properties, and you're required to know about isomerism and classification of alcohols into three different types. So let's go with number one. Um, naming. This is actually from National 5, uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. If you're not sure, have a look at my National 5 video link to do with this. But the basic idea here is that it's not enough to just say butanol anymore, uh, or even propanol anymore, because that doesn't tell me where the hydroxyl group is on the molecule. Um, so we start numbering from the end of the chain that's nearest the hydroxyl group. So if it was there, for example, then we'd have one, two. So this is in fact butan to all. And I know for things like uh, ethanol and methanol, you don't need to put the numbers in. There's nothing to stop you. Ethan one, it's only ever going to be ethan one all, of course. You can probably pause the video and fi figure out why ethan two all doesn't exist. Um, so this is butan two all. Properties. The properties are governed by the fact that there is a hydroxyl group uh, on the uh, molecule. Oh, before we go any further, in fact, I would like to have a look at what happens when you have more than one hydroxyl group. Um, and if we have a molecule like this, which is used in antifreeze and car engines, this is called a diol. It's actually ethan 12 diol to be exact. Um, you can also have trials as well. Uh, you can have multiple different... Um, we'll have a look at that in the fats and oils section when we look at a molecule called glycerol or glycerin or propan-123 trial. All the same molecule, slightly confusingly. So, naming, uh, you have to put the number in to specify. If there is a branch, then the branch is secondary uh, to the hydroxyl. The hydroxyl is the daddy for alcohol, so you always start naming the branch nearest... Sorry, name the carbons nearest the hydroxyl, not near the other branches. Properties, as I said, are governed by the fact that you have got this, which means you can form hydrogen bonding with your neighbour molecule of alcohol, which does, of course, uh, change three different properties. It changes the viscosity. That's the gloopiness. Uh, it changes the melting point. And it changes the boiling point, as in the melting points and boiling points are significantly higher than they would otherwise be. A favourite question for the SQA to ask is to compare the boiling point of, say, uh, 1, 2, 3 propane um, with ethanol. And you find, of course, propane's a gas at room temperature, the last time I checked. And ethanol, the last time I checked as well, is a liquid at room temperature, so this... Uh, has got way higher melting and boiling points than this. You might wonder why are we not doing the wrong comparison here? There's an interesting question. Could you pause the video and tell me why it's correct to compare a 2-carbon alcohol with a 3-carbon alkane? Um, another one that I have seen, the answer by the way, is because the GFM is approximately equal, so therefore the London dispersion forces are not going to be the differing factor in the melting and boiling point difference. I have also seen a comparison of isomers of alcohols. For example, this, this is a problem-solving uh, question, but this is a molecule which, if you come back from more abuse next year at Advanced Higher, you'll recognise as a member of the ether family, and it is in fact an isomer of propanol, propan one all. I didn't follow my own rules, put the number in here. Um, and you can see this has got oxygen joined to hydrogen, so we're going to get that nice polarised bond here, delta minus, delta plus, which can affect the neighbouring, which can be attracted, sorry, to the neighbouring um, polarised bond as well. This guy here does have oxygen and hydrogen, of course, in it, but they are not chemically joined to each other, so you don't get that delta. So this has no hydrogen bonding and low melting boiling points. Um, one other property is this magic word here called miscibility. Miscibility or miscible. Uh, miscible means it will mix with water and of course alcohol, certainly the smaller ones, definitely will mix with water because you can form hydrogen bonds with the nice neighbouring... What is that meant to be? You can form a hydrogen bond with the neighbouring watering, mole watering molecule? Oh my goodness. So there's the hydrogen bond from the oxygen to the hydrogen. 
uh, which means that small molecules like ethanol are completely miscible with water. They dissolve in water quite happily. Uh, once you get to larger chains here, uh, certainly into pentanol and hexanol, uh, there's so many carbon chains in a row that this becomes significant. This non-polar chain becomes significant. It doesn't really want to mix with the water anymore. Classification and isomerism. Let's draw three different versions of butanol. This is about as simple as you can get. C4H9OH. Uh, we could shift the OH into the centre of this line. So butantool now. Still C4H9OH, but not the same molecule. Uh, it's an isomer of it. It has slightly different physical properties because they pack together in slightly different ways compared to this. And what we can do lastly is we can pluck this CH3 group off of here and stick it on here. Once again, still C4H9, um, but most definitely not the same as these molecules here. Now, we classify these th three types of alcohol based upon how many carbons are attached to the carbon that's bonded to the hydroxyl. <laughs> that's a little bit clumsy, but if you have a look at this, this is the carbon that's bonded to the hydroxyl, and it is attached at the moment to only one carbon. So these are called primary alcohols. This hydroxyl attached to this carbon, and this carbon is attached to one, two other carbons. So these are called secondary alcohols. Secondary alcohols. And you can pause the video and work out yourself for this one here. The hydroxyl is attached to this carbon, which is attached to one, two, three. These are thirdary, <laughs> sorry, tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols. This is a new classification system to depending on where the OH is and what is attached to the carbon round about this OH. There is an alternative way of looking at it, where you see if you've got a hydroxyl on the end, exactly on the end of a, ring of, a string of carbons, it's primary. If it's somewhere in the middle and opposite a hydrogen here, it's a secondary. And if it's somewhere in the middle and opposite another uh, carbon, then it is a tertiary alcohol. Um, do watch for cyclic alcohols, but famous uh, problem solving by the SQA. It's not really problem solving. Well, yeah, it's problem solving, isn't it? So there's pentanol. What classification is pentanol? Uh, you can pause the video and see what you think. Uh, this hydroxyl is attached to this carbon, which is attached to one, two other carbons. So in fact, it's a secondary. In fact, all cyclic alcohols will be secondary alcohols. Unless, of course, you had another one on there, in which case it would be a tertiary alcohol. Thanks for listening, folks. Short and sweet today. Bye-bye.